Sunbury, Pennsylvania was cut up into pieces by two railroads. The three major cuts were done by the east-west running track that came across the Susquehanna from Williamsport and disappeared up the Shemokin Creek Valley and into the anthracite coal fields. The Pennsylvania Railroad's Mount Carmel branch that snaked through town was locally called the Horn Railroad because of its large reverse curves. There was a siding off of this line that started right at Shemokin Creek and went straight west when the Horn made its first turn and joined the north-south main heading south. This track was so close to the Redding, in fact, it doesn't even qualify as creating its own slice of Sunbury. The north-south Pensy track that came over from Northumberland that ran all the way down to the Rockville Bridge and Harrisburg is the Buffalo Line. We're at milepost 259 on that line watching the oncoming train 11Z thunder through town on January 9, 2020. It's just after 10 a.m., and at this time, the Z, as it's known, was an early morning runner that was no doubt a bane to morning job commuters. Back to the future in 2024. The only thing better than going to catch a train is getting caught by a train en route. We're on Lackawanna Avenue in downtown Scranton and we're on our way back to Sunbury when some local alcohol power disrupts the downtown traffic as it moves down the Strawberry Hill connecting track in top and tail operating mode. Several hours later in Sunbury, the train 11Z that we're stalking today is rumbling through town after 5 p.m. on a sunny and mild March 25th. And if you look closely, the time-honored tradition of the locomotive engineer giving a friendly wave to a young boy waving trackside is being carried out today. Locomotive number 4267 is an AC44 C6M that was rebuilt from the Dash 944 CW number 8998 at the Juniata shops in 2019. The second locomotive is an XCEFX AC4400 CW that the Norfolk Southern purchased secondhand from CIT Rail almost a year earlier in June of 2023. The third unit is the reason that we're in Sunbury today. Number 3014 is an ex Southern Pacific EMD SD40 T 2 tunnel motor locomotive. The tunnel motors were originally modified SD45s that were built specifically for the SP, with the SD40 models coming shortly after. After the Union Pacific takeover of the SP in 1996, the tunnel motors were retired, sold off, and scattered throughout America, with some making their way to the New York, Susquehanna, and Western. Number 3014 was made even more unique because of its extra long snoot nose. On the SP, the snoots were used to house local troll and or radio control equipment that was used in mid and or rear end train helper service. The access door on the conductor side of this snoot most likely gave entry to that radio control equipment. Locomotives are constructed to operate in all types of climates, from scorching desert heat to frigid mountain winters. An ample supply of fresh air is required at all times for cooling and combustion. In the 1960s and 1970s, when trains operated through long tunnels or snowsheds at slow speeds, the ability of a unit to receive large amounts of air cool enough to dissipate heat was an issue for the Western Railroads, notably the Southern Pacific and the Rio Grande. Before the introduction of microprocessor technology, locomotives did not self-govern and would quickly overheat and fail in these conditions. SP had a policy of running long, heavy, slow trains through the tunnels. When you run slow, heavy trains, the diesel spend more time in the tunnels. EMDs have higher radiator intakes that suck in hot air from the upper parts of the tunnel. 
Evidently, Union Pacific, Burlington Northern, and others run their trains fast enough that they get out of the tunnels quick enough that the hot air does not affect them as much. SP did until they bought the tunnel motors instead. There's actually a story in Trains Magazine a few years back about EMD telling SP that they should run shorter, faster trains, and SP ignoring that advice. Ergo, they purchased the tunnel motors to cope with the extensive exposure to hot, cooling air. Early attempts to address overheating, including adding a water spray system on the radiators to improve cooling. This was followed by the application of elephant ears that ducted air from a lower point on the side of the locomotive and into the radiators. Both solutions had various degrees of success and contributed to the development of EMD's tunnel motor design, which used the low air intake vents on the long hood and a cold side radiator fan system. This design places radiator fans between the intake and the radiators, which pushes a larger volume of cool air through the radiators versus a hot side fan system found on EMD hood units that pulls hot air exiting the car body. Several railroads, including the Canadian Pacific and the Chessie system, and even the MRS in Brazil, tested the elephant ear concept in an attempt to overdress overheating issues, but never ordered the tunnel motors. EMD's first tunnel motor, the SD45T-2, was the modified version of the SD40-2 as we just talked about. Southern Pacific and subsidiary Cotton Belt were the only buyers ordering 247 copies between 1972 and 1975. The tunnel motor variant of the highly successful SD40-2, the SD40T-2, gained slightly more buyers at 312, split between the Southern Pacific, the Cotton Belt, and the Rio Grande, orders that spanned from 1974 through the 1980. While no four-axle tunnel motors were ever ordered, EMD did design a tunnel motor version of the GP50 called the GP50T for the Rio Grande. Unfortunately, an unexpected order for 12 GP50Ts was never finalized and the design went unbuilt. The cold side radiator fan design with side air inlets used on the SD40T-2 and the SD45T-2s was applied to other EMD products in North America, such as the MP15AC, the MP15T, the GP15-1, the GP15AC, and the GP15T. Many EMD products around the world, which were already using cold side radiator fans, also received the new radiator design. Eventually, the tunnel motors that were built for the Southern Pacific and the Rio Grande, still on the roster in 1996, ended up in the employ of the Union Pacific. The majority of the tunnel motors were purged from UP's roster in the 2000s, ending up on dozens of other Class 1 railroads, short lines, regionals, and lease fleets across North America. Canadian National is the only Class 1 railroad operating the tunnel motor design today. It inherited two separate fleets of SD45T-2s rebuilt mechanically to SD40-3s during its acquisition of the Bessemer and Lake Erie in 2004 and the Duluth, Mesabi, and Iron Rage in 2011. Today, its fleet of 20 tunnel motors sees service primarily on Canadian National's iron ore operations in the upper Midwest. Mexico's Ferrocer, now Ferromex, reintroduced the elephant ear concept with 15 SD70 Aces constructed by EMD in early 2015. The tunnel motor concept using cold side fans would most likely not be feasible with the size of the radiator systems in today's locomotives, hence the application of the less efficient elephant ears. To compensate, these locomotives take advantage of the microprocessor system and GPS equipment on board that can adjust certain aspects of the locomotive, such as cooling the fluids in the radiator system below normal levels prior to entering tunnels on the railroad. In the 1990s, SP bought a lot of GEs, which normally have lower cooling intakes, which makes all GEs de facto tunnel motors as all Alcos. That sounds all dandy, but I guess the crews don't like that. According to Doug Rydell, a former Seaboard CSX engineer, when you walk past the radiator intake with the fan on, it sucked any loose clothing over the grate surface and it got really dirty. The wire mesh that I'm referring to is a wire grill pressed into a series of V's and it collects leaves and trash that would otherwise be sucked into the radiators and clog them. Think like a giant bug screen on the grill of a car. The openings are larger, square footage-wise, than a standard SD model for improved airflow and for more air volume. The SD45T-2 is a variant of the venerable SD45 that featured the Dash 2 upgrade components such as improved electronics and high-traction trucks, with the T denoting its cooling system modification. The intake for radiator cooling air was moved to the walkway level and the cooling fans themselves were under the radiator cores instead of above. 
Tunnel motors were built for mountainous regions in the United States, the western United States to be specific, where SP had previously encountered repeating overheating issues on their SD45s. The later SD40T-2 looks similar to the SD45T-2. One spotting difference is the longer hood on the SD45T-2 to accommodate the V20 prime mover versus the V16 used on the SD40T-2. The SD45T-2's cab is further forward on the frame so there is less front porch. This mimics the differences between the SD45-2 and the SD40-2. Another spotting difference is the SD45T-2's three fan access doors on each side above the cooling air intake while the SD40T-2 has only two. The unique SD40T-2 tunnel motor was the backbone of the Rio Grande and the Southern Pacific fleets during the 1970s and the 1980s. They were distinguished by the large see-through radiator grills at the rear of the locomotive just above the walkway. Like their SD40T-2, some of SP's SD45T-2 tunnel motors were obtained by the Kansas City Southern Railway, the Bessemer and Lake Erie Railroad, the Duluth, Masabi, and Iron Range Railway, and by the Union Pacific Railroad when it merged the SP in 1996. Some SD45T-2s were rebuilt and designated to SD45T-3, SD40T-3, and SD40-2T. In addition, some locomotive leasing companies own the SD45 tunnel motor locomotives. They are scattered all over the United States today and unfortunately are becoming more and more an increasingly rare sight.
New York Susquehanna and Western number 3012 is an SD33 Eco locomotive that was rebuilt from one of the former SD40 T-2 locomotives that were bought secondhand by that railroad. It's shown here at Port Jervis, New York on the former Erie Railroad coupled to the 3014. EMD's 710 Eco line of 8 and 12 cylinder prime movers celebrated its 15th anniversary in 2022. Introduced in 2007, the Repower Package was the company's answer to the expanding market for low and medium power gen sets that were being sold at the time. While the company sold far fewer Ecos than gen sets, time has proven the longevity of the rebuilt EMD locomotives to be superior to those gen sets as the number of active gen sets has greatly diminished over the years. The EMD Ecos were built by EMD Progress Rail or were sold as kits to customers that chose to rebuild their power in-house. The kits generally contained a new 710 Eco engine, alternator, EM2000 control system, additional cooling equipment, and an automatic engine stop-start system. The kits were designed for any emission level from Tier 0 to the current Tier 4 standard, and Ecos were sold to every Class 1 railroad in America except for the Canadian National, along with a handful being exported to other countries. Because many of the repowers replaced the existing 16-cylinder engine with a smaller 8- or 12-cylinder engine, early repowers typically didn't need cooling modifications that were visibly external except for the 12-cylinder Tier 3 or Tier 4 repowers, which required the new flared radiator system to accommodate the additional cooling equipment. To simplify its parts inventory, EMD settled with the larger flared radiator hood several years ago for all 12-cylinder repower kits regardless of their emission tier levels. While the vast majority of the 710 Ecos built to date used existing locomotive cores to begin with, Canadian Pacific's order of 150 GP20 C Ecos are unique and all were built with a new frame, cab, and long hood. Canadian Pacific provided many internal components from 150 retired and scrapped GP9s for EMD to rebuild and use inside the GP20 C Ecos to qualify the locomotives as Tier 0 emission, using each GP9's build date to set their tier level. While sales have been largely flat for the Eco repowers recently, it's still a viable alternative in the rebuilding market for railroads looking to upgrade older equipment in their fleets. The 3012 was among the last of the tunnel motors that were built for the SP in 1980. 3012 was built as Southern Pacific number 8242, and the slightly older 3014 was built in 1978 as the Southern Pacific number 8321. I stumbled across the 3014 in the dead of night on March 16, 2016 as I was passing through Binghamton, New York. It was sitting idly in the darkness all by its lonesomeness behind a McDonald's restaurant on Route 11 as I was heading out of town. I came across the 3012 again, one year later working its trackage in Ridgefield Park, New Jersey. And even though it was almost nighttime, the friendly crew made a pass by so we could get a good shot. Also worthy of mention is that track shown hugging the tree line in the background. This is the busy CSX River line between northern New Jersey and Albany, New York. And as the black and white thoroughbred Jeep clearly shows, the Norfolk Southern also has a presence in the area. As a bonus in this video, and although not an eco locomotive or a tunnel motor, one of Suzy Q's former SD60 locomotives, number 3808, charges northbound over the Fish Island Bridge at milepost HA690 in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania with train 14R in tow. The date is August 19, 2018, and like the 3014 heading south today, the Big 60 is returning north from having maintenance performed at Enola. The six SD60s that were on the Susquehanna roster were all former GMTX Oakway leasers that I've talked about in past videos. Sadly, I do believe that no SD60s are on the Susquehanna locomotive roster today. As well, I do believe that the 3014 is the last of the Mohicans on the Susquehanna as all of the other tunnel motors that I know of have been rebuilt into eco-locomotives.